Hi, so today we are going to start one of the very interesting, very simple topics of the mathematics set theory. This topic is very simple, but believe me, it's very useful in solving higher mathematics. In this video, we are starting from the basics of the set theory and in the next few videos, we are going to discuss the complexity of the set theory also. So, as you can see, I have already noted down a question on the screen. This question asks, what is a set? A set is nothing but a well-defined collection of objects. What do you mean by a well-defined collection of objects? So, if you define a particular set, suppose if I define a set of planets in our solar system, you don't have any doubt about which planets are there in our solar system, right? But if I ask you to find a good football player, which player will belong to that set? It's a big question. You may find somebody a good player, but in views of another person, he may not be a good player, right? So, the set of planets in the solar system is a well-defined set. We all know there are only eight planets in our solar system. So, anything other than those eight does not belong to that set, right? But if we talk about a good player of football, the set of good players in football may vary from person to person. You may like Messi, but there can be another person who likes Ronaldo. So, the set of good players in football or good players in cricket or your favorite flower or the good book in library. All these sets which vary from a person to person cannot be called sets, right? So, a set is a well-defined collection of objects which is true for every person or every situation, right? So, what is set? Set is a well-defined collection of objects. So, what all can be the well-defined collection of objects? Let me list down. So, the well-defined collection of objects can be, as we have discussed, planets of our solar system. There are only eight planets. Any planet other than those eight are not a part of the solar system. So, we know which celestial body belongs to the set of planets of our solar system and which doesn't, right? Similarly, the colors of the rainbow. We all know there are seven colors in the rainbow and any color other than those is not included in the colors of rainbow. Similarly, the capital cities, it is also a well-defined set and then the set of all vowels. This is also a well-defined set. So, these are the few examples which are actually well-defined sets and if I write down a few more examples like the not so well-defined collection, these are the few things which actually cannot be defined properly. If I talk about the interesting books, you may find some book interesting, but I may not find that book so interesting. So, that book will not belong to my set of interesting books, right? So, it is not well defined. Similarly, if we talk about the favorite food for children or food items which are liked by children, it is also not defined properly. And similarly, good schools in India. This is also very personal choice. And similarly, the favorite flavors of ice cream, this also cannot be defined properly. So, the things which I have written in yellow, they actually represent a well-defined collection of objects and the things which I have written in green, they actually vary person to person. So, the things which I have written in yellow can form a set which is true for everybody, right? And they will be called sets, right? And how do we represent a set or how do we write a set? Suppose if I write all the colors of the rainbow, let me name this set as C and all the elements of this set will be written in curly brackets and these brackets are also called as braces and if I write all the colors, they will be V for violet, B for blue, I for indigo, G for green, Y for yellow, O for orange and R for red. Right? These seven will be the elements of this set. No other color like lavender, lilac or peach, they will not belong to the set of the colors of the rainbow. Right? So, this is a set of the colors of the rainbow. And how do we represent a set? First, we write the name of a set C. I have named this set as capital C. Then there is an equal to sign and all the elements of the set will be enclosed between two curly brackets or braces, right? These curly brackets are also called braces. So, this is how we represent a set. C is the name of the set and these curly brackets actually enclose all the elements of the set and this V, capital V, is called 
an element of set C, where C is the set of all the colors of the rainbow. B or blue is also an element of the set C. This symbol is epsilon and it actually represents is an element of right so how do we read this v or violet is an element of c b is an element of c right so this is how we represent and suppose if i write a color peach peach is not an element of c so if you cross this epsilon sign it actually becomes not an element of right so this is how we represent a set and this is how we represent an element which belongs to a particular set right so what we have learned we have learned what is a set and then we have learned how to represent a set and we have also learned how to represent an element of a set right or how to write whether a particular object or thing is an element of a particular set or not these are the few things which we have learned and after this we are actually going to discuss how to find the elements of a set sometimes it is not possible to write all the elements of the set then there are actually three methods by which you can represent a set first method is the description method in this method we actually define the set in proper words so suppose if I want to write a set of students who are born in March, then I can write it like this. S is equal to the set of students born in March, right? And if I want to write set of national numbers, which are less than 20, then I can write it as, suppose if I call it as A, A is equal to set of national numbers less than 20, right? This is the description method of representing a set, right? And there is one more method by which you can represent the set is called the rooster method. So the second method of representing the set is called rooster method. In this method, we manually list all the members or all the elements of the set. So suppose if I want to write a set A, which actually lists all the alphabets of flower. So those alphabets will be F, L, O, W, E, and R. This is actually the set of all the alphabets used in the word flower, right? And suppose if I want to write a set of all the alphabets of the word floor, F, L, double, O, R, in that I'll write F, L, O, and R. I will not write double O because any element can appear only once in a set, right? So this is the rooster method and it is a very crude method in which you have to write all the elements manually, right? And there is one more method which is actually very smart. That method is called set builder method or rule method. In this method, we actually write a rule which the whole set follows. Suppose if I want to write all the counting numbers which are less than 30. Suppose S is the set. I will write S. Then I'll draw these braces and I'll write X. This represents set S has an element X where a vertical line represents where X is less than equal to 30 and X belongs to or X is an element of set of natural numbers. Set of natural numbers is represented as capital N. So what is this? This is nothing but the rule which this set follows. S is a set of all the counting numbers which are less than 30. Yes, the set of counting numbers is actually called the set of natural numbers. And since we have a restriction over here, restriction is that all these elements are less than 30. So I have written that condition over here. The condition is X is less than equal to 30 and X is an element of natural numbers. This actually completely defines all the counting numbers less than 30, right? So this is the set builder method or rule method of writing a set. Similarly, if I want to make or define a set of even numbers, which are less than 50, how do we write it? 
Suppose, let me represent that set by E. E is a set whose element is X, where this X is less than equal to 50 and X is divisible by 2 and this X is an element of natural numbers. So this will list all the even numbers which are less than 50. And in the next few videos we will definitely be coming across lots of sets which use these methods of building sets. Right? So this is all for this video and in next video we will be discussing about different types of sets and the operations which we can perform on sets. So keep watching MathSmart and bye bye till then.